Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna go over the first little bit of sketches that I've come up with for my underwater dwelling humanoid species to go along with my video that I came up with last week for the underwater world of Leosila and all the things that are going to go into that. So of course the first or one of the first things that I wanted to work on was the main species that was going to be living in this environment, this world. The, I think I'm going to call them the Cilians, but I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think that is what sounds the best. <laughs> so I started off in my sketchbook originally just because I enjoy pencil to paper the most. That is where I really feel like I can translate my ideas the best. I am not that great at Photoshop, but you will see me move to Photoshop in a little bit in this video. What I'm doing here is I am just trying to sketch out sort of like a paper doll to use in Photoshop so that I can mess around with different patterns on the skin and fashion and stuff without having to draw something over again and again and I really don't find I sketch very well in Photoshop because of the disconnect between the tablet and my screen so sketchbook it is for now and <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely happy with the actual shape of this creature that I come up with or this cilian <laughs> if you will just because I, I know the anatomy is off from what I actually want it to look like I'm still messing around a little bit with whether or not I want them to really look like a manta ray or if I want them to look a little bit more like a sugar glider, which is a little type of flying mammal, marsupial, I think. Mar it's those little cute black and like white squirrel looking things with big arm flaps. <laughs> Uh, those are kind of the two main inspirations for this as well as the Zoras from Legend of Zelda. They were a very big inspiration as well. And I knew going into it that I wasn't interested in making anything too mermaid-like because mermaids are kind of a little overdone. And I really like the way that rays and things kind of glide through the water like that with those big flappy wings. And I kind of wanted to just translate that into... A human. I, I feel like this would make more sense if humans were to like evolve underwater in a way because I don't think we'd grow tails <laughs> like fish and we definitely wouldn't need hair which is why I created them as sort of like bald bald and streamlined was was what I was going for <laughs> um but I, I do work this way I, I find when I work on things like this or projects like this I'm a little disorganized uh, and I find it hard to stay on track with just one thing at a time. But I find it helps me put together a higher quality product in the end when I can go about it like this, um, piecing multiple things together at the same time until I'm happy with kind of what, what the finished product is. <laughs> it's not the best way to work, I'm sure, but I do find it a lot easier when I can sort of go from idea to idea. So that would be me wanting to jump into getting some skin colorations and how I actually want their skin to look and um, feel maybe if I decide to put fur on it before I am actually fully confident with what their body is going to actually look like. But I think jumping between those things and kind of seeing where I go with each step is going to help me come up with a finished product in the end that I'm really happy with. Speaking of being happy with finished products, I wanted to talk a bit about being discouraged by something you are working on when it's still in its infancy, when you're still at the early stage of the project's development. <laughs> uh, it can be, it can be easy. I think we all uh, do it um, when you get swept up in an idea of something, a concept of something that you want to create. You know, that's the fun part is coming up with the ideas behind everything. But you can start to become disheartened when you are working on it and it, it isn't reflecting the image you had in your head. I know I, for one, have 
definitely really struggled with ugly phase, I guess if you want to call it, with my art, which is basically what a lot of artists call um, that sort of awkward in-between phase of a piece when you kind of put down the initial sketch and you are building towards the finished piece, but all your layers aren't there and all your details aren't there and you still haven't quite figured out the way that you want that arm to go and things like that. Um, it can be it can be discouraging because you know what you want it to look like, but as you're trying to get there, maybe you're not getting there at the speed you think you should be. And I think social media gives us a false sense of time in that sense, because a lot of the artists that we follow or look up to, you know, they post photos of their finished products, maybe one process photo in between, but you don't really know when they actually took that photo <laughs> between that and when the piece is finished. So, you know, you think it doesn't take them any time at all to create things. YouTube, I think, is even worse because you sit down and you watch somebody create of a piece of art in maybe a 10 minute video that's sped up super fast. And at the end of it, you're like, whoa, they created that in 10 minutes. <laughs> Uh, I, obviously, I don't think any of us actually think it only takes them 10 minutes, but it, it makes it seem like they can just kind of pump this out like a machine. And then when you sit down and you have to work on things and it's taking you a really long time to figure something out or to get it to the point where you think it should be, you get disheartened, You, or at least I do. Um, I feel like I'm working too slow or the quality I'm producing in this time isn't efficient and on a really bad day I'll, I'll look at it and kind of go you know what's the point why why continue to work on this piece when I know that I'm not gonna make it the way that I want it to be and that's not true you don't know that the only for sure way that you will never get something to a point where you're happy with it is if you stop working on it that's just that's just the truth it's like, oh, what is that quote? <laughs> you like miss 100% of the shots you don't take <laughs> or whatever. It's something like that. If you don't continue to push through, you will never get it to be where you want it to be because you won't be working on it anymore. And it's okay to take your time and it's okay to walk away from something, but I don't think you should ever trash or delete or fully stop working on something and never go back to it ever because I find sometimes when you walk away from something even if it's just for a couple of minutes or a day and you come back and look at it with fresh eyes you might notice it's not that bad or you know the eyes that you hated so much now that you're looking at them you can kind of see why they don't look the best to you and you might get a better outlook on how to actually fix them or how to improve them overall. It's important to hold yourself up to expectations, but to not beat yourself up when you can't hit them at the speed that you think you should be. For me, going through this, I was getting really frustrated because I had this sort of idea in my head of how I wanted these things to look, and you know, I was, I was being gluttonous. I was indulging in the thought of these, how they would look in a concept art book. If this was, you know, a real video game world or things like that, and I was showing these little sketches for process work, how do I think they would stack up to other drawings and things like that? And the reality is, I don't think mine are there yet. I don't believe that they are of the same quality that I kind of was envisioning in my head. And that's okay because these are three cut and copy pictures of the same line art so I can work through one problem in this giant puzzle that I am slowly piecing together. And this is a bit of a weird project in the sense where I'm not really focusing on just creating character designs, I really want to create a world that if somebody was flipping through the pages of this could get a sense of being immersed. And that's not going to come from, you know, three body images and three headshots of some fashion. Like nobody's, nobody's going to be like, oh, wow, yeah, this is a really great submersive universe. I feel really engaged by just looking at what you guys are going to see in this video today. 
So it's, it's going to be a project that I'm going to continuously work on, which I think is really awesome. And I went a little off topic there, but basically I just really wanted to kind of talk a little bit about, uh, talk a little bit about the frustrations you can feel when you want something to be done and you want something to be great and you want something to be perfect and you aren't creating that when you sit down. And I'm, there's so many videos, so many videos by other artists who tell you not to stress about things being perfect and to accept your ugly art and things like that. I'm not really gonna talk too much about those kinds of things because I think it's pretty, it's pretty obvious that you're not gonna be perfect. Everything you make isn't gonna be perfect and that you shouldn't beat yourself up about it. But that can be a video for another time. I really just wanted to talk about the fact that your art is going to take a little bit of work to go from the first stages all the way to the final stages, and that's okay. And it doesn't matter how long it takes you to get to that final stage. Don't let anybody else's work, not work ethic, don't let anybody else's speed at which they work hinder your desire to want to create things too. The only time you should be worried about speed and creation is if it is indeed your job and you need to have things made by like certain times. <laughs> I'm getting very rambly. I just, I know that you should set expectations for yourself and you should work very hard and you should try and push your skills so you can create good product faster. I do get that, especially if you want it for your job. I just want to let you know that if you are still erasing and you're still struggling to work through things, that that's okay too. And remember to push through it because you never know what you could create at the end of the day. So to kind of end off talking a little bit about the actual video you guys have been watching, I messed around with a couple different um, fish skin ideas and colorings for the Salayan species, but I wasn't really happy with any of them. I think the one on the far left, I'm not sure if I said this already, but I think that one is going to be the closest to where I want them to be. I don't want that sort of blue ripply color necessarily because I think that will look a little too much like the Zoras from The Legend of Zelda, so I want to play around a little bit more with it. But around this point, on this third one here, I was getting kind of tired. I had realized that the ideas I kind of had in my head I was having issues executing and I kind of needed to go back and think about them a bit more, maybe mess around with these after taking a bit of a break. So as I was finishing this one up, I, I didn't want to leave it. I wanted to keep working, but I didn't want to keep working on this specifically. So uh, I, I'm really in love with the idea of these people where they don't really have hair because, you know, you don't really need it when you live underwater. Being very decorative in uh, their headdresses and possibly little hand and feet decorations, but mostly I, I was envisioning all these really cool head wraps, uh, kind of inspired by um, a mixture of like head scarves, pirate hats, old lady hats, like from, I don't know, like back when they used to put like the giant feathers and all the, just really extravagant headwear. I knew it was kind of where I wanted it to be and where they're underwater, I feel like it would make sense for a lot of those things to be made out of corals and seaweeds and, you know, maybe some of the shells and things like that. So that has been my favorite part of this little project so far has been trying to solidify the, the fashion for them, which is interesting because going into it, I really thought I was going to focus very strongly on their body and their skin first and kind of going into all those details gender differences between male and female. If I decide that I want this race to have sexes like that, um, I was also playing around with the idea of them being asexual, but I'm not quite sure about that yet. Uh, but yeah, just I, I just fell in love with this concept and that's really where I've been drawing a lot of my inspiration from is coming up with these headdresses. So I think the next video will probably be a little bit more of an elaborate look into the fashion. I might do like a nicer portrait 
because I, I need some time to think about the skin and stuff. Anyway, guys, I want to thank you so much for sticking around and listening to me ramble. Remember to be kind to your artistic selves, and I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye.